Welcome to Honors Geometry Lesson 1.3 where we talk about midpoint formula and distance formulas. But before we move on, let's once again cover what we ended up with on last time which were congruent segments. Looking at the diagram there, it looks like to me the segment XM is congruent to segment MY. It looks that way because they look like the same length. But it's not a matter of look, it's a matter of knowing. I know that those two segments are congruent because of these tick marks right here. Because these two segments have been tick marked with one tick on each of them, that tells me that they are congruent. That also makes M as the midpoint because it cuts a segment into two congruent parts and I'll uh, give you that definition right here right now so you might want to pause and write this down and then we'll go on from there I asked you to pause so pause while you write them down good now you're told that E is the midpoint of DF so I could put tick marks, I could put three tick marks on each of them, could put two, but just the same number of tick marks on each of them to show that those two segments are congruent. And I'm going to use three this time because I feel like it. All right, if DF is 20, how big is EF? That's right, it's 20. How big is DF? You betcha, 40. And I know you're saying, come on, man, and give me something that's a little bit harder than that. Okay, fine. How about if I tell you the DEF is 15? Does that mess you up? No, you can still find that DE is 15 and that DEF is 30. Right? All right. How about instead I tell you that DF is 45? Does that mess you up? Hopefully not. You should be able to figure out that those are both 22 and a half, right? Yeah, I would think so. They're both 22 and a half or 22.5 if you'd rather. Yeah, okay. They're both 22 and a half. So I did, still didn't stump you. So since I didn't stump you, let's try one more way that uh, an algebra tree teacher might try to stump you, okay? How about if he told you that DE was 2x plus 3 and that EF was 3x minus 20? Would that help you? Could then you figure out the lengths of all three segments? Well, I hope you can. Okay, since E is the midpoint, should be able to write an equation something like this 2x plus 3 equals 3x minus 20. Subtract 2x from both sides. 3 equals x minus 20. Add 20 to both sides. x equals 23. So how big is DE? 49. How big is EF? 3 times 4 is 69 minus 20, 49. How big is DF? 98. Now I know you'll see some homework like that. That's going to stump you a little bit more. Alright, let's move on now with coordinates and midpoints. Alright, the midpoint formula is x sub 1 plus x sub 2 over 2. Uh, y sub 1 plus y sub 2 over 2. So let's go ahead and find a couple of endpoints and see if we can find the midpoint. Okay, the uh, this endpoint has coordinates of 1, 3. The coordinates of this point here are 9, negative 2. Okay. This formula says to add the two x values, 1 and 9. 
that's 10 divided by 2. The x coordinate is 5. And then add the y coordinates. 3 plus negative 2 is 1 over 2. So the coordinates of the midpoint, let's see if I can draw this straight. I doubt it. We'll try. Okay. The coordinates of the midpoint would be at 5, 1 half, right about there. That's where the midpoint is, 5, 1 half. Now it's not always going to be that nice. Sometimes they are not going to give you a picture, a graph, for you to read endpoints or anything. All they're going to give you are the coordinates of the endpoints. They're going to give you like 7, negative 8, and 5, negative 3. And they're just going to ask you for the midpoint. So you just add those, the 7 and the 5, those are the two x values, 12 over 2. Add the two y values, negative 8 and negative 3, add those together, negative 11 over 2. And the coordinates of that midpoint, 6, negative 5 and a half. The real trouble that you're going to come up with or come into is when they give you the coordinates of one endpoint and the midpoint. And they ask you, hold on a minute, i got to fix something. Sorry that was bothering me. I don't know if you noticed it. You can go ahead back and rewind it and figure out what I did. I don't know how I typed it that way, but I fixed it. All right, now, basically, you're trying to find the coordinates x and y of the other endpoint. So negative 2 plus x divided by 2 equals 4 and 4 plus y all over 2 because that's the midpoint formula the two y coordinates added together divided by 2 that equals the coordinates of the midpoint. Now I will let you go ahead and do all this algebraic mumbo jumbo but do you think you have an open enough, open enough mind for me to show you a different way of doing it? Do you have an open enough mind? I don't know, but we'll try. What I'd like you to do is I would like you to put the endpoint on top. Put the midpoint in the middle. And when I say put the midpoint in the middle, I mean put the midpoint in the middle. Sometimes they will list the midpoint first. And I don't want you to be on autopilot and not be able to give me what that uh, midpoint is. All right. You can do all this algebraic shenanigans, or you can do it what I call the, the hip-hop method. And I think it's kind of fun. You just kind of hip and hop around. To go from A to N, did the X value go up or down? Well, obviously it went up 6. So to go to the other endpoint, we're going to go up another 6. So that's going to be 10. To go from the Y values from the endpoint to the midpoint, you went up 3. So to go to the endpoint to the, uh, the midpoint to the other endpoint, you're going to go up 3 more. Coordinates are going to be 10, 10. And if you did the algebra here, you would have also found out that x and y are 10. I just think this is a whole lot less work. After you do it a couple times both ways, you can tell me otherwise if you think you like it the other way. And now we will move on to the next part of chat lesson uh, 1.3, which has to do with the distance formula. Okay, 1.3 distance formula. To find the length between two points, A and B, use the following formula. 
x sub 1 minus x sub, sorry, x sub 2 minus x sub 1 quantity squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 quantity squared. And if, I, if this were in, in uh, honors geometry, I would say delta x quantity squared plus delta y quantity squared and then take the square root of that. This delta here means change in. Whoops, that's an I. Change in. Okay, the change in X and the change in Y. Okay, so if this were an honors geometry course, I would teach it that way. Delta X quantity squared plus delta Y quantity squared. And uh, what does that look like in practice? Well, here we go. All right, get rid of this stuff, gross. We're just going to use delta X quantity squared plus delta y quantity squared. All right, to go from two to eight, how much did the x's change? From two to eight, it changed six. And then from one to three, how much did it change? Two, yes. See, isn't that a whole lot better? So 36 plus four, root 40. And right now, I just want you to leave it as at that Later on, when we get into chapter 7 in March, we'll talk about how to make, simplify that. Okay, find the distance between negative 2, 5 and 6, 2, 20. Okay, the square root of delta x quantity squared plus delta y quantity squared. From negative 2 to 6, how much did the x's change? That's right, it changed 8. And then from 5 to 20, how much did the y's change? You betcha, 15. So square root of 64 plus 225. Square root 289. And anybody worth their weight in salt says, no, that's a perfect square. 17 times 17 is 289. So the answer, 289. And as the French would say, ho, 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 we are now at the piece of resistance. And yes, I know I said that wrong. Stinking French. Can't say anything right. All right. How much did the X's change? We'll start off with the square root of delta X quantity squared plus delta Y quantity squared. Notice this is how I'm starting off. This is how I expect you to start off each one of these distance formula problems. All right, uh, how much did the x's change from negative 3 to 1? 4 is correct. 4 squared, and how much did the y's change from negative 2 to negative 5? They went down 3. Make sure you put that in parentheses when you put it in a calculator, if you're using a calculator, because otherwise you will get this next part wrong. It's 16 plus 9. Square root of that, that would be the square root of 25, and that everybody knows is 5. So that's how you use the distance formula and this will conclude Honors Geometry Lesson 1.3. Have a great evening.